hope that you came here today to have a little bit of fun. Can I get a on three? One, two, three. <laughs> I didn't uh, do very good in the direction there. I was hoping you might remember from yesterday the idea about fun. Let's try it again. One, two, three. Yes! Okay. Um, thanks for the introduction. I appreciate it. And I'm very glad to be among my peers, uh, safety minded individuals. I'll tell you briefly I got my job in safety by uh, the same way that many of you did this is through your musical career. Right here, uh, right I wrote, a, I wrote a safety song and played it in the safety meeting. Here I stand before you, a jazz guitar player, to talk to you about the myth of motivation. The good news is, I am just a total nerd like the rest of you. I love all the safety stuff. Love it. So hopefully you identify as nerds in a good way, otherwise I've just insulted the entire group all at once. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, he's a uh, very dynamic and engaging uh, facilitator. He's not someone that just uh, bores you to death uh, by, by whatever subject he's talking about. It's, it's very engaging. Um, he, he gets you on the edge of your seat. You want to listen. You want to hear what he has to say, what he's going to say next. Um, that makes it fun. So I want you to think about that there, because that really defines for us the reason we're sitting in this class. The need that we have to have influence is that we must cultivate, right? We have to create the culture that we're looking for. 76% of you say that you are skilled at motivating people. That's right. You have to be your safety leaders. Can you think of someone who's skilled at motivating you? Sir? My wife, she has usual, unusual motivation techniques. <laughs> <laughs> Any that you're free to share here in this setting? Oh, no, that everybody wants to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Maybe let's, I'm going to pause now in this defining of terms and I want to ask you, are you the dinosaur that's driving your safety program? Is the dinosaur motivating this little person in exercise? If you look at psychology, what we're saying is no. The internal state or condition that's activated in time, that tiny person is the desire to not become dinosaur poop. One of the best takeaways from that was it really just challenged you to think about the old motivational models, you know, Hertzberg's models and, the, uh, and some of the models that uh, really all of our more modern behavior-based safety systems are built off of. Knee high, cheeks and knee high. One, two, three. Knee high, cheeks and knee high. Uh, we've got safety needs. Now, when we say safety needs, <laughs> you guys are thinking, that's right. Maslow had it right. They need us. No, they need to not be run over by a loader. That's where that need gets stopped. They need to not be eaten by a polar bear. After that, folks, the safety program that we're talking about is existing in a different place in the hierarchy. Goal zero, nobody gets hurt. Right, the incident-free culture. Those are ideas. Where would those ideas land if we look at the, the hierarchy? Sir? It's self-actualization. And so, if we're going to ask them to get there, then we have to figure out, well, are their needs being met? But if you want someone's motivation to change, right, if you want their inner motivation to change, you have to have a crystal clear understanding of what your values are. Your organization has to be expressing those values in their daily activities, and then you have to provide step-by-step -step opportunities for those workers to be able to line their values up with yours. It's very important for us to use this tool to understand how do we identify motivators for individual employees. So the, the takeaway when we look at motivation is I'm not talking just about safety. I'm talking about workers that are happy happy at work. They want to be there. That's what motivation is about. And happy workers are going to be much more likely to be willing to put on those safety glasses that are fogging up because they have, they have aligned their other values with you. I often say there's there's a lot of good presenters and then there's great. So um, Kevin's taken that beyond you know that, that normal expectation for a good presenter and uh, really engaging with the audience um, really uh, gives a dynamic performance. Um, and as a trainer, um, you know, when I coach other trainers, I tell them you're, you're entertaining, you're, you're presenting material in a fun learning environment, and uh, Kevin embodies that.
Thanks so much, folks. I appreciate your time. It's been a joy to work with you. Let's enjoy the rest of the conference and see what the good ideas that we can come together.